Greetings in the name of our Lord. As we are recalling the events of Palm Sunday that begin the week of our Lord's Passion, today you can view the cross collection in the transept area put together by the Unity community team. Browse and read the cards describing each of the crosses on display, along with the creations of various members, including some children and youth. They will be there throughout Holy Week and again on Easter morning. Our annual Easter egg hunt will be held today at 1230. We'll gather in the chapel area for some activities before we release the children into the yard to hunt all the eggs that are currently being hidden. We have also several worship opportunities for your participation this week. A powerful and deeply reflective worship service will be held on Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Here in our sanctuary, as the chancel choir will lead us through worship as they offer the cantata, Songs of the Shadows, that will walk us through our Lord's passion unto the tomb. We will share in the Lord's Supper as an echo of the Last Supper, and I believe you will find this service a very moving an inspirational time as we remember the events that unfolded during what we refer to as Holy Week. On Friday, we have an opportunity for further reflection on the events of our Lord's crucifixion as we will walk along Green Tree Road from here to the former Mount Pisgah Presbyterian Church where we will gather in their cemetery as a remembrance of our Savior's walk through the streets of Jerusalem to Gagatha, and to the tomb. We will pause along the way for some scripture reading, words of reflection, and recall the events using a variety of symbols along the way, ending our journey, as I said, in the cemetery. We are then invited to the new Mount Pisgah Presbyterian Church site on the edge of Crafton for a time of reflection as we enjoy a simple meal of bread and soup. I hope you will join us for the walk or please meet at the church in, near the edge of Crafton for the meal and time of reflection around 12 noon. Then on Sunday, we will celebrate the new life our Lord has ushered in for us all. Our festivities will begin with a continental Easter breakfast offered in our fellowship hall. And I hope you will join us as we connect with our fellow Easter celebrants around table and share in remembering the people that were a part of that first Easter morning. The breakfast will be held from 9 to 10 a.m. Then we will joyously celebrate the Lord's resurrection and promise it holds for us in living a new life under the Lord and as a community of faith in these times. Also, next Sunday will be the last Sunday to contribute to the One Great Hour of Sharing offering that we're currently receiving to support the mission efforts of the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, the Presbyterian Hunger Relief Efforts, and the Self-Development of People. We're also continuing our efforts to care for all of God's creatures through our pet ministry. And here to speak to that is Carolyn Kozlowski. And as she's making her way up, I want to invite everybody to pick up your copy of the book, Life is Messy, on display in the transept, Look for Your Copy, by Michael Kelly and read it in the weeks ahead. We will have two opportunities to discuss the book on Thursdays beginning in May as we sort out how to live our faith amidst the cultural context we find ourselves in this generation of being the body of Christ in the world. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to uh, bring to your attention an ongoing activity of our growing Creatures of the Creator Pet Ministry at Unity, um, our pet donation drive. Every other month, we designate two local uh, animal rescue organizations to be the recipients of donations of pet supplies that are donated by members and friends of Unity. The first of these organizations chosen for the months of April and May is the South Hills Pet Rescue. Uh, located in South Park, Pennsylvania, the mission of the South Hills Pet Rescue is to rescue, rehabilitate, and rehome dogs of all breeds with all needs. 
South Hills Pet Rescue is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and it houses an average of 50 rescue dogs at all times. Uh, apart from three part-time staff members who care for the dogs on site, uh, this organization is totally run by volunteers. The second organization that has been chosen is Merlin's Safe Haven Cat Rescue. Uh, this organization is a Carnegie-based network of rescue and foster volunteers and was established to provide for the rescue, care, and placement of cats that have been abandoned, neglected, abused, or cannot be kept by their previous owners. Uh, cats that are adopted through the Merlin's Safe Haven Cat Rescue are placed exclusively as indoor family pets. Merlin's is also a 501c3 nonprofit all-volunteer organization. Merlin's currently has several sick and injured cats in their care, and they are in desperate need of supplies. That's where our pet ministry here at Unity comes into play. Our Petey's Pals donation station, located at the entrance of the transept, is a drop-off point for donations of pet supplies that are directed to these hard-working organizations. How can you help? Well, take a wish list that is available at the donation station for each of these two rescue groups and bring back any of the pet supplies requested on the lists. You'll be helping to support their ongoing rescue care and adoption efforts. Thank you in advance for your donations. One other announcement I'd like to make uh, about the pet ministry. Uh, mark your calendars, please for Saturday, June 4th. That will be our annual Blessing of the Animals event. This year's event will be held in the Reflection Garden this year, and we will resume all outdoor activities such as the food trucks and the nonprofit booths that we've had in previous years. Thank you very much. And Petey's uh, drop-off station is located in the Northex for this Sunday and next Sunday because of the cross uh, uh, display that is up in the transept area. Again, life is messy books. If there's not one there with your name on it, there is a stack that have no names. So if you're a visitor or a guest, please pick one up. Also, I would encourage you all to fill out the attendance register at the end of the pew, pass it along, and pass it back, noting who is in the pew being your neighbor today. Also, Obviously, this is a very busy time in the life of our congregation as Easter approaches and as the spring season is finally emerging. So many things going on that we forgot to include two very important things coming up in the next several weeks. On Sunday, April 24th, the Food and Fellowship outing will be to the newly opened Steel Mill Saloon on Mount Washington along Grandview Avenue. And if you'd like to attend that, you can contact Linda Aspinall or Ashley Cesarado if you desire. Also, on May 1st, there will be a huge connecting event following worship in our fellowship hall. I'm sorry, in our transept area. Uh, it'll be our spring fling on May 1st, so look forward to that in three weeks. Now... Let us prepare our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and souls for our offerings of worship this morning as Bobby leads us in our focus on celebration of Palm Sunday.
And now let us recall the events of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, tell him, the Lord needs it. And those who were sent ahead went and found it just as Jesus had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. And they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And when Jesus came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to joyfully praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees and the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Please join with me in the call to worship. <clears throat> Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. This is the day the Lord has made. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. seated children you're going to need to look this way okay because I want you to watch a rock and a stone okay I want you to focus on a rock and a stone uh, hmm? right there Excuse me, gentlemen. okay I think I got it I can do it this time you can do it rock Hosanna? No. Hosanna? No. No, as in not yes. Stone, why is this so hard? You can do it. How hard can it be? 
I bet I know why. And? You heard people say that a guy is dumb as a bag of rocks. Yeah. You've never heard them say a guy is dumb as a bag of stones, have you? No, I... Hey, are you saying you're smarter than me? I'm not saying anything. They said it. I'm just telling you what I heard. Well, it don't matter much. He's almost at the gate. I wanted to praise him, too. You heard what he told that Pharisee. If the people are silent, then the rocks and stones will cry out. They didn't stop, so we can't start. Who can blame them? It's Jesus, right there in front of you. You wouldn't stop praising either. You got that right. I'd be hosan whatevering at the top of my lungs. If I had lungs. It's not every day that the Son of God passes right by you. I wasn't going to say anything, but Peter's sandal touched me. No way! Wait, Peter's the rock, and I'm a rock. That should have been me. Didn't Judas step over you? That's kind of cool. Maybe. I'm not sure about that guy. Something's going on with him. I don't feel right. Well, the crowd's moved on. I wish somebody would pick up this palm leaf. Thanks. Much better. Want to hear something crazy? I met this Pablo the other day from a land really far away. How did it get there? Camel. How can a pedal on a camel? It was, stuck in, it was stuck in the hoof. Oh, never mind. Sorry. As I was saying, this pebble tells me about this country where they worship these fake gods that live... How'd you do that? Do what? The air quotes. You don't have any hands. I'm not... I'm not really... I'm not really sure, but that's not important. There are people out there who worship us. Do you believe that? Why would you worship us when you can worship the one who made us? Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, here come those mean Pharisees. I hope one of them stubs his toe on me. I really wish I had hands about now. Why? So you can do air quotes? No, so I could pick you up and chuck you at that Pharisee. Do you believe the nerve of that guy? Trying to boss around the Son of God? You know, Stone, if you had arms, I would let you.
Okay, the other children can join Nancy as she exits left or right. Which way are you exiting? All right. That's their right. I know. Here you go. Take your palms. Here you go, Ron. <laughs> Get one upstairs. Thank you. A Psalter reading this morning comes from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 4, and 19 verses 1 through 4, and verses 19 through 29. Listen to God's word. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. Open the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, save us. O oh Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession, up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The word of the Lord. And now we come together to confess our sins to God and to one another. We come with glad shouts of Hosanna and joyful songs of praise, yet we still fall short of the glory of God as sin stains even our best intentions. And with faith and hope, let us sing God's forgiveness. And now the prayer of confession together. Triumphant God, we join the crowds of the ages in shouting your praises. While our lips give you glory, our lives seldom reflect your purposes. We sing easily of your greatness, but living faithfully is often beyond us. We hear of your salvation, yet sin is still close and real, daily leading us away from you. Have mercy on us. Ride into our hearts with healing grace. Forgive what we have done and direct who we shall be. Lord, save us. Hosanna. He who rode into Jerusalem, struggled on the cross, and was sealed in a tomb, is risen from the dead. Jesus Christ has defeated sin forever. Blessed is the one who comes with abundant grace and boundless mercy. Blessed is the one who has done for us what we can never do for ourselves, bringing us life and love. This is good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Now let's all rise and extend the peace of Christ to one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with
Indeed, hallelujah and amen. And may that song reverberate in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls this day as we celebrate this entrance of Jesus not only into Jerusalem, but into all of our lives. Let us pray. Gracious God, illumine now these words by your Spirit, that we might hear what you would have us hear and be who you would have us be. For the sake of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. As I turn to the scriptures of Philippians today, we come to a section which speaks to us about who we are called to be in relationship with Jesus and what we are to do and be encouraged by doing by the Apostle Paul. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. I repeat. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death. On a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Today, today is the last Sunday in our Lenten series of walking through the shadows. And today we're going to walk through the shadows of the passion, our Lord's passion. Many of you have participated in naming some of the shadows of your life by placing the gray circles on the clouds in the transept area. Naming some of the shadows that have come into your life or are hovering over your life even today. Whether that would be the shadow of the pandemic years, the shadow of death because you've lost someone, the shadow of a lost job or income, the shadow of a broken relationship, or some other shadow of temptation or evil that has been cast upon or over your lives. During a recent survey, people were asked, why is there so much suffering and evil in the world? And for people of faith, who believe in a good and all-powerful God, it can be an even more difficult question to grapple with. 6,500 everyday Americans shared their thoughts when asked, in your own words, why do you think terrible things happen to people through no apparent fault of their own? Here's a sampling of some of what they had to say. I believe that God has a plan and that things happen as they are designed. Life is random and sporadic, and harm is done to good people sometimes. The most you can do is make the most out of it. Bad luck. Unfortunate timing. Being in the wrong place at the wrong time. No one can control the world. It isn't personal. Through every hardship we grow and learn. We cannot control every aspect of our life. We can only try to cope with our circumstances and be kind to others. Terrible things happen, period. Who they happen to is relative. Life just happens. 
It's God's will. Sin and evil exist in the world, therefore bad things are going to happen. Free will is free will, and that's why all these things happen. Destiny, fate, karma. People and systems fail us. Growth and appreciation may come out of it, but why does it happen? This week, I was reminded by Jonathan Worcester that the account of Luke's gospel regarding the events of Palm Sunday, Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem, is different than the accounts recorded in the gospel writers of Matthew, Mark, and John. There's no sign of leafy branches in Luke's account on that day. Nor is there a single Hosanna voiced from the crowd. We have to look to Matthew, Mark, and John to find what we might regard as the traditional trappings of Palm Sunday. Luke's account is an alternate version. Same event, alternate version. Just like all the gospel writers have something they want to try to emphasize with their telling of the gospel story. And in some ways, I find this account the most intriguing. While offering neither palms nor hosannas, Luke's narrative uniquely provides us with stones. Perhaps it is also the most appropriate version for this particular year. Instead of palms and hosannas, we get stones and rocks. And I want to thank Brody and Sam for helping us focus on this fact today, even with a sense of humor. As we watch and hear the events of this day unfold, remember that some of the Pharisees, some of the Pharisees present implore Jesus to silence even his disciples. And Jesus' response are these very words from his lips. Words that are an echo of Psalm 118 and are from the voice of angels at his birth. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, an echo of Psalm 118. And if everybody there knew Psalm 118, which is what they were supposed to be memorizing, they would understand Jesus' intention, that God's love is steadfast immovable, always abounding. And again, the echo of the voices of the angels, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Those are the words of Jesus in response to the Pharisees saying, come on, quiet the crowd, quiet this disruption. But then Jesus goes on to say, I tell you, if these were silent, even the stones would shout out. Consider the power of that moment. Consider the meaning of this week and the importance of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. For what Jesus is telling us cannot be denied. If his disciples don't announce it, then the stones along the road will take up the chorus. Jesus is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. It is a bedrock truth that must be told. It cannot be ignored nor silenced. If we don't acknowledge him, if we don't praise him, if we don't acclaim him, then the stones will bear witness. The Lordship of Jesus must be proclaimed. The stones know it is so. Jonathan Worcester reminds us that Luke doesn't just provide us with stones on Palm Sunday. No, 
Luke notes their presence all along Jesus' journey. Like when this season of Lent began. As it always begins with Jesus in the wilderness, withstanding the devil's temptations. In that forbidding and forlorn place in the desert, a stone is present. A stone the devil suggests the famished Jesus should turn into a loaf of bread. If, of course, he was the Son of God, he would do it. But Jesus resists the temptation to glorify himself. The stone in the wilderness remains a stone, bearing witness to Jesus' faithfulness to the course God has set before him. And as Holy Week continues to unfold, We follow Jesus to the Passover table, and we will this week on Monday, Thursday, where Jesus speaks of a new covenant as he breaks the bread and fills the cup. And then he tells his disciples, his companions, what is coming later that night, that one of them will betray him, and another will deny him. And next, Jesus leads them from the meal to the Mount of Olives. And then he withdraws. He withdraws from them about a stone throw away. And he knelt down and prayed. The stone is there to listen to Jesus' anguished prayer. As Jesus seeks the strength to complete his life's purpose and work. Many of us have seen that famous painting of Jesus praying in the garden upon the rock, the huge rock. There, Jesus' deepest devotions are laid bare. And as some versions of Luke would have it, his sweat becomes like great drops of blood. Battling fear and anxiety, Jesus places himself in God's hands in those moments. Even as the crowd comes to arrest him, the rock, the stone bears witness to it all. And upon the end of Jesus' crucifixion, his body is placed in a tomb. And a large stone is rolled in place to seal his death once and for all. And after his death, on the first day of the week, the women go to his tomb at dawn with spices and ointments, and they find the large stone inexplicably rolled away from the tomb's opening, and his body is gone. And the women are perplexed and full of fear just as we are any time a shadow or darkness of some form falls upon our lives. We become perplexed, anxious, and fearful. But today we see that Jesus, in all his humanity, joins us in our context as he did as he came into Jerusalem that first Palm Sunday. Jesus entered Jerusalem to be with the people. And not only celebrating the Passover, but to become the Passover for us all. Just as the blood sacrifice caused the angel of death to pass over the homes of the Israelites, the death of Jesus causes us to no longer bear the condemnation of death but to live in a freedom of a promised new life. Jesus joins us in all our humanity and in all of our sufferings. He joins our suffering through his own human suffering during what we fondly now call Holy Week in order to usher in a new life 
from the wilderness to the entry into Jerusalem, from the Mount of Olives to the empty tomb. Luke places stones at key points of Jesus' journey. I wondered a lot about those stones this week after reading John Werther's article. I wondered a lot about the stones that line the paths we travel. There are small stones we might carry in a pocket or place on a shelf. Stones bearing a witness to a moment in our lives or a discovery we made. Or an experience we encountered, or a promise, or a prayer. There are stones and rocks on hills and in the rivers of sacred places we have traveled. Or the pavement of the stones that support us in our going out and our coming into places. Or the headstones and cemeteries marking the passing of generations. What do these stones have to say about us and the paths we travel? My friends, this Holy Week unfolds in a time when exuberance is faint. When it might be hard for us to utter a Hosanna with conviction because of the context and circumstances we find ourselves in these days. Or we may hesitate to wave a leafy branch with much enthusiasm. I saw your start today. Am I going to wave it or am I not? You know, am I going to join in the parade with the children? Or am I just going to? Think about it. Maybe we don't have a sense of exuberance This Sunday, because of the circumstances and the context, we find ourselves in all the shadows that hover over our lives. But I pray we may still have the faith and attentiveness to listen to the stones lining the road Jesus travels. The stones know what Palm Sunday is all about. And so I invite you to listen to the stones this week. At the conclusion of the service, I invite you to not only take a palm branch home with you, but also a stone. As I have filled the baptismal font with stones this morning. After listening to the postlude, come forward and gather up a stone to set alongside your palm branch in your home. Remembering the stone, the rock, which is Jesus. And all his promises to walk alongside us through the shadows and darknesses of our lives. As he walked the same journey we walk, even unto death. Even unto death on a cross. Now for those of you who are at home or For all of you later today, go outside. Go outside and look at the buds of green emerging from the gray of winter or the flowers bursting up out of the ground after a long winter's rest. And look for a stone. And walk through this week with a confidence of faith that God is with us. Through Jesus, the incarnate one, who was one of us. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, that same spirit given to us in baptism, may we walk in faith each step we take forward through life. May we walk through the shadows of the passion remembrances this week, knowing the Lord is with us through all the shadows of life and death. Indeed, the light has come into the world and the darkness cannot overcome it. These were the words John used to proclaim Jesus' birth. 
established through his death and announced with the Lord's resurrection. The light has come into the world and the darkness cannot overcome it. My friends, keep in mind no shadow exists unless a light is somewhere. So look to the light and walk toward the light. Alleluia and amen. And I invite you to unite your soul with my own, with all other souls praying in these moments unto God. For God knows our needs and prayers before we even utter them. Let us pray. Wonderful God, we bow before you in gratitude for the life you have given us in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, you have shown us that your love has no boundary. There is no place you will not go to be with us and to be for us. As you came into Jerusalem long ago, come into our hearts this day anew. Hear our cries and heal our hurts and hold us close. We pray for our world, for your world. And we pray for all that is happening in Ukraine and elsewhere in the world where there is suffering. Be a refuge. And we pray for leaders and aid workers, for citizens struggling amidst terror and violence wherever it is this day, down the street or halfway around the world. We pray that your spirit would bring forth peace and righteousness, comfort and strength. And Lord, we pray for those who are sick, and for those on the long road of recovery, for those struggling with uncertain diagnosis and seemingly never-ended treatments. We pray for Gwen Nelson under palliative hospice care, for Kathy Buzzalo dealing with heart diagnostics that are leading to an irregular heartbeat. We pray for Leslie Herrick, who's been diagnosed with T-cell lymphoma and will begin a treatment regimen after Easter. We pray for Frank Sabo, who had open-heart surgery this past week. 
We pray for Danny T. dealing with bladder cancer and Nick recovering from surgery. And a woman, anonymous, who's dealing with breast cancer diagnosis and a mass on her liver at the same time. We pray for Brett Hershick and his family as he has entered into hospice care for brain cancer. We pray for Tom Mack as he deals with testing and preliminary diagnosis of cancer. We pray for the families of Tyler Slaymaker, John Predis, and all others who are going through a season of grief and loss. And Lord, we pray for your presence in each and every one of our lives as you move among us. We pray for those who are alone, those who are hungry, those who are without hope. We pray for the discouraged and the downtrodden, for those unable to look beyond the troubles of this day. We pray for those facing difficult choices, those weighing many options, those dealing with unclear direction on their life's journey. We pray for those beginning new ventures, trying new things, and opening themselves up to fresh possibilities. O oh God, as this holiest of weeks unfolds before us, and we rechase the suffering and the death of Jesus, and claim once again the promise of resurrection, we pray that you would seal in our hearts the message of these holy days, that in Jesus you are with us, and for us in all things, even suffering things, even death, and that in Jesus you have overcome every power that would hurt or destroy. And we seal this prayer that Jesus taught us to share when we are joined with people in praying in the way Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, as we now come to that time in our worship service when we are to respond to God's word given unto us today, I wanted to acknowledge a recent gift the church received. Resources from heaven. Thanks to the generosity of George and Jeannie Illig, some of you will remember that delightful couple, faithful members of this community of faith for decades, we received some money from heaven because they set up an investment fund with the Pittsburgh Foundation. And we recently received $935.04. And we receive a gift annually in about the same range. A gift that is extended to our community of faith every year as a result of George and Jeannie's love of this community of faith and its people. And indeed, this is just one of the many ways you can share your resources now and into the future. So with gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all that we have received, let us bring our gifts before God this day. Alleluia and amen.
offer these gifts. Transform them and use them as you desire to accomplish your purposes in Jesus Christ, the head of the church and the Lord of our lives. Alleluia. Amen. to bring over to our prayer station this morning because of all the other moving parts of the day. First of all, I would invite your prayers for Deli, Debbie Phillips, Loretta Coronado's daughter, undergoing further testing for a variety of challenges and physical limitations. And the other is one I want you to keep in prayer for at least a year. For Megan and Bobby Straub and Ella and little Bobby because Bobby's being deployed to Romania for one year today. Keep that family in prayer. And now, my friends, let us go from this sacred place and into this holy week, trusting that God is with us and for us in every time and place. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you this day and forevermore. Alleluia and amen. Amen.